Like many artists, Edward Middleton Manigault came to New York early in the 20th century and studied with two of the leading teachers there, Robert Henry and Kenneth Hayes Miller. He first started working in the style that Robert Henry often advocated for students to try, going out and painting life, but he quickly became fascinated with developments in modern art and painted for a number of years in a post-impressionist style, colorful, loosely painted forms. Manigo also came under the influence of Albert Pinkham Ryder during that time, and Ryder painted dark, moody canvases. You can see that influence creeping into Manigo's work in Adagio. Manigo himself, he was a fascinating character, although not as well known today as he was during his lifetime. This is one of two paintings of his that was included in the 1913 Armory Exhibition, also known as the International Exhibition of Modern Art. And that was a show that introduced the latest trends in modern art to a wide American audience. Adagio doesn't necessarily move towards abstraction like a lot of those works did, but takes a more personal turn. It's more introspective. It really has almost a hallucinatory quality with the flowing clouds in the sky and all of the different poses and expressions. After the Armory Show, Manigo went and served in World War I. He was only overseas for about five months before having a nervous breakdown and returning to this country. For the next seven years or so, he struggled to regain his inspiration. He actually died early in 1922 after starving himself in an attempt to induce hallucinations to see new colors and find new imagery for his art. So he came to a very young and very tragic end.